Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're doing another example on shear force diagrams, bending moment diagrams, and deflected shapes. And in this problem, I've set it up in a way that we're going to get uh, two inflection points on the deflected shape. So let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram. And we're going to find that the reaction at A is 35 kilonewtons and the reaction at B is 25 kilonewtons. And now we can set up the shear force and bending moment diagrams, where those grid lines are marking off each of the points of interest that are going to show up on our shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. So this is example nine. If you guys have been watching along, you know the drill. We start at the left hand side, we throw on the reaction there, uh, and then we take our cut infinitesimally close here. So the distributed load is going to be zero and the internal shear force is gonna be positive, matching that sign convention. It'll be positive uh, 35 kilonewtons to get the, um, the sum of forces in the y direction to balance out. When we move along and take our virtual cut just to the left of the point load, we're gonna get um, two meters worth of this distributed load here, so that's going to be 20 uh, kilonewtons pressing down. So 20 going down, 35 going up. We're going to have to have five, uh, sorry, 15 going up, and that'll be so positive 15. And then we'll go and we'll connect those lines together. When we take our cut just to the right of this point load, we're adding the point load into the free body diagram as another 20, so 40 going down, 35 going up. We're going to have five going up to the right of that cut, so that'll be negative five. So we'll drop that down to negative five. And then when we extend our free body diagram to the end of the virtual cut here, all right, that's 20. Uh, so we're gonna have 60 going down, 35 going up. Uh, that means that this will have to be 25 going up for those to balance, and that will bring us down to minus 25. All right, if that's too fast for you guys, then I'd, like I said, this is video number nine. We've been over this a lot. So for the people that have watched all of them, just trying to not bore you guys to death by saying the same thing over and over again. But uh, do feel free to check out videos 1 to 8 if, uh, if this is a little unfamiliar to you. So moving on, in this region, this shear is actually not going to change as we go uh, past this applied moment. And like an applied moment is basically no different than a force couple, right? So this could be a force couple that looks something like that. Uh, and if you look at the shear, these two forces are just going to like net each other out to no change, basically. Um, so the shear force uh, diagram is unaffected by a bending moment. The one thing to mention is if you have a point load on a beam, you're going to get a jump in your shear force diagram that corresponds to the magnitude of that point load, whereas if you have an applied moment, basically nothing happens. On the bending moment diagram, if you have a point load, you're not getting a jump. You might get a, like a change in angle or, uh, or in slope at that point, um, but not a physical jump. But when we get to the applied moment, you'll see that the, you know, the bending moment diagram actually physically jumps from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So let's just quickly check that we've uh, ended at the correct amount of shear that we're expecting here. So if we draw the free body diagram, starting on the right, taking a virtual cut just to the left of point B, that's going to be somewhere in this region. We have 25 going up. We're going to have 25 going down. That's opposite that positive sign convention. So we're expecting this to be negative 25 kilonewtons on the shear force diagram. And that is exactly what we have, negative 25. So we have done that correctly. Okay, so moving on, let's look at the bending moment diagram. Again, if you guys have been watching the last couple of videos, you need you know that you need to take the areas uh, of the shear force diagram if you're doing it this method. So we've got these areas here. So in this first region, the area under the curve is 50 kilonewton meters, and this is a sloped line. So we're going to be getting a parabolic curve uh, of a bending moment diagram that's tending towards the positive side because this area is on the positive side of the shear force diagram. So that's going to be 50 kilonewton meters. So the change in magnitude here goes from zero up to 50 kilonewton meters with that parabolic curve. In this region, we have an area of 30 kilonewton meters, and I've written this in a way, but we're going to try and work around that. So uh, we're going to drop down. It's parabolic, and uh, it's going to drop down to uh, 50 minus 30, so that's going to be 20 kilonewton meters. In this next region, we have an area of 50, so we have to go from, it's on the negative side, so we're going to drop down to the negative side again, so from 20 minus 50, that's going to bring us down to minus 30. And before we look at the area from this side, we do have this applied moment here. I'm going to draw a little dot on green here, or maybe just like uh, we'll throw a green line here, just so we don't forget about crossing this point. So to talk about this, the, I think the best way to think about this is if you have some beam like this, and we're taking a virtual cut, and uh, and we apply a moment, let's do it in green, we apply a moment that goes this way. Now, when we take a virtual cut, for static equilibrium, the internal moment is going to have to increase 
the same equal and opposite amount in the opposite direction uh, as the moment that we've just applied. So when we look at this, this is the positive sense. So when we add a moment uh, on the right hand side of a virtual cut that's going clockwise, uh, it means that the internal moment is going to grow uh, by that much in the positive sense. So that means on the bending moment diagram, if we're applying, like even here we can draw it. So if we apply this by 80, then whatever the moment was, internal moment was before we applied this, then this one has to increase by 80 more in the positive sense. So we go from minus 30 plus 80, we're gonna go up to positive 50. So that marker was about there. So we're gonna jump up to plus 50 because of the supplied moment. And then now in this region, we can see that the next area is, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I wrote that wrong. Uh, that's equal to 50 kilonewton meters. Um, and so that's going to tend towards the negative side. So it's going to go from 50 down to zero, just like that. And that is what we're expecting on this simply supported beam, that each end should start and finish at zero because they're not fixed rigid connections, nor do they have an applied moment acting right on the ends. Okay, so if our original undeflected structure looked like this, then let's draw the deflected shape after we've applied these different kinds of loads. So we talked in the last couple of videos how uh, where we have the bending moment uh, positive on one side and negative on the other side of a given point, then that's going to be an inflection point on the deflected structure. So there's going to be an inflection point somewhere in line with this. And then here again, where we have positive on one side and negative on the other, there's going to be an inflection point on uh, basically in line with this. Now it turns out that where we have positive areas on the bending moment diagram, we're getting a concavity that's like a, it's concave up for the shape. Where we have negative areas in the bending moment diagram, we have concave down. And then where we have positive areas, again, that's again that's concave up. So when we think about how to draw this, we know that there's no vertical displacement here at these pins. We basically have two options um, because there's so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to come up like that or we're gonna have to go down like that. There can only be two. So if we went up, it's gonna look something like this. It'll be like concave up, concave down, and then like concave up again. Um, that kind of intuitively looks wrong, basically because we're pointing on this. But before we get into that, the other option is it could be concave up, concave down and then concave up. And again, this would be wildly exaggerated. But I'm gonna keep this drawing here because when we, we've looked in previous videos where we talk about if you draw the bending moment diagram like I do with the positive side on top, then the deflected structure can be sort of inferred as the inverse of the bending moment diagram. So uh, we would say that from here it would go down, you would like do go up and then like do something we don't really know. Um, that more or less gives us uh, the concave up, concave down, concave up that we're looking for. Um, but yeah, basically here we have a section that is concave up, we have a section that is concave down, and then we have a section that is concave up, and they are defined by these inflection points here. And this, this diagram is, uh, would be wildly exaggerated on what's actually happening in, uh, in real life, and this would probably actually be like quite a bit smoother, and the, the max deflection would be like over to the left here probably somewhere. Um, but at least uh, if you're asked to draw the deflected shape of this, you can use your knowledge of inflection points where we're getting the axis basically switching sides, or we're getting the graph switching sides of the axis, and then also concave up versus concave down. And then from that, uh, given your kind of boundary conditions here, like your usually your reactions or pins and that sort of thing, um, you'll be able to construct <clears throat> just like a really rough kind of idea of what's kind of going on. And this one looks so weird because we got this applied moment here acting on it. Um, but yeah, the only other thing that you're, uh, that you might be asked to do is to like tell, uh, tell your professor what the location of the inflection points are. Um, it's nice just to label them on the drawing here. So this one is clearly uh, two meters away from point B or three quarters of the way across the span. This one is somewhere that we don't have the component for. So what we do is we just do similar triangles. We take this little triangle here uh, that's sitting there and it's part of this larger triangle. And so all we do is uh, we just do little, uh, so 20 over X, if we want to call that X, is equal to the bigger triangle. The Y component is uh, 50 over two. So two times 20 divided by 50, that is 0 0.8. So X is equal to 0 0.8 meters. It's this point here, this inflection point, is 0 0.8 meters to the right of the midpoint, or from point A, it's 2, 4, it's a 4.8 uh, 
meters away from the left-hand side. So you can draw that on if you want somewhere and uh, just indicate that you do know exactly where that inflection point is and uh, that you you know which way these are. Yeah, basically you know the concavity, you know where they are. Um, so anyways, guys, if you watched this far, thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.